Netflix is a devious company. They cracked the streaming model years ago, set the standard, and have made stars out of new talent like Millie Bobby Brown. But Netflix isn't so much her backyard as it is house arrest. She hasn't been allowed outside unless under strict curfew like the MonsterVerse in what I can only imagine is fear she'll outgrow them. And she certainly has, and to see her trapped in this abusive relationship where her talents are squandered is frustrating to say the least. Millie's latest run with Netflix is a good example of this. Damsel opens with a king and his knights sneaking into the lair of a dragon. After smashing her eggs, she wipes them out and is about to finish the king right before we hard cut literal centuries later and catch up with everyone's favorite psychic child. Millie Bobby Brown plays Elodie, the highborn daughter of a distant kingdom so barren it resembles an Ethiopian tundra. One day, an emissary arrives with a request for Elodie to marry the prince of the kingdom of Oria. As her family's kingdom is so destitute it looks like people are going to start eating each other like Haitian cannibals, Elodie, her sister Floria, their father, desperate for money in more ways than one Ray Winstone, and diversity hire stepmother, the great Angela Bassett, skip out on their duties and set sail for the new kingdom. Oria is lavish and beautiful, but not all is as it seems, when Bassett's curiosity is met with a cold stare, and her husband has withdrawn like he walked in on Lizzo spread eagle. After the marriage ceremony, Elodie is brought up to the mountain for one final rite of passage, where her blood is mixed with the prince's. Upon completion, the prince divorces her in record time when he tosses her into the mountain. From this point forward, it becomes a game of cat and mouse, with Elodie running from the dragon in the labyrinth of the mountain and discovering the beast has gone through more princesses than Disney has mothers. It all culminates in Elodie not only escaping, but speedrunning back through the whole game in record time and then explaining to the dragon that she, the dragon, that can smell people's blood, has been deceived for centuries. You see, after the death of her newborns, back at the beginning of the movie, the dragon made a deal with the king to spare his life, but only if the king and his lineage sacrifice three daughters to the beast. So, after the father redeems himself, Elodie then saves her sister and nearly kills the dragon, because apparently the dragon isn't immune to the liquid hot magma that she spews from her own gullet. Elodie heals the idiotic monster, befriends her, and leads her to the kingdom where she gloats about her record-breaking Spelunky run and leads the dragon in massacring all of those within the entire castle. Afterwards, Elodie, her sister, strong independent stepmother who don't need no husband, and the dragon sail to their kingdom with a wealth of Oria's riches and food, leaving a power vacuum that will surely be filled through violence. So, as you can tell, this movie is a bit of a damsel fire. The concept is appreciated, but characters are all over the place. Almost everyone's an idiot and I have more questions than a CIA interrogation. Actually, for a while now, I've wanted to write a script that was basically just questions. Back in my Love, Death, and Robots Season 1 video, I briefly touched on the idea of good questions, but I never went further than that. In short, good questions draw you in and immerse you in whatever has your curiosity, like introducing a friend to your favorite hobby. Bad questions are the reverse, and often destroying any sense of immersion because the choices or actions made by characters on screen are baffling and will have you raising more eyebrows than The Rock. So, let the exercise commence. Why did the king seek to kill the dragon with so few and poorly armed men? Presumably you know the dragon can spew magma as it has terrorized your kingdom for some time, so why did you bring nothing but swords to a dragon fight? Was Bowen outside the budget? Has no one in your kingdom ever heard of a spear, lance, or halberd? How about a bow? All right, enough picking on the humans. How about we pick on the dragon? Why did the dragon accept the king's plea for mercy? Why does she even offer this deal in the first place? If she wants revenge for the death of her babies, why didn't she just kill him? Then why not destroy the kingdom afterward? Better yet, why not cripple him? fly down to the kingdom, incinerate it, and return with proof that she has ate his family, and then kill him. Why does the script for this movie extend past this point? Why does the dragon get to kill three daughters with no retaliation? Did no one in centuries design any more advanced weapons of war besides the sharp metal sticks? Does no one know how to use a bow when hunting? Did no one think to make a ballista? Why didn't anyone think to take the kingdom and push it somewhere else? Does anyone else think this deal is fucking retarded? So the dragon wants to kill three daughters, right? So why doesn't the dragon confirm the king even has three daughters to begin with? 
How does this minute mixture of blood trick the dragon into believing that all women after the initial three are the same family? You had the source of pure royalty knelt in front of you and you can't tell the difference between his fat ass and some random peasant with only a hint of royal blood in them? That's another one. Why didn't the dragon think to put two and two together when all of these daughters are more diverse than Pop-Tart flavors? Or are we supposed to believe the dragon thinks the royal family has a harem of women at all times? For that matter, how come no one in the kingdom thought the numerous women disappearing after marriage into the royal family wasn't odd? Let's assume this sacrifice must be made after each marriage once per generation, okay? If a generation is every 15 to 25 years, then how have 12 to 60 families not conspired against the royal family? Did everyone in this kingdom just assume all of these daughters throughout the centuries just went on vacation? I can keep going, I've got pages of these. So yeah, Damsel is a mess of bad characters. A decent concept, awful pacing, crap plot, terrible ideas, dumb story, 50-50 practical and special effects all tied up in a more passive woke rapping. Save your time and don't bother with it even if you are a Millie fan. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.